Hi, this is The Business Guy. And in this video, we're talking about real estate asset protection. We're talking about the three main strategies we use to protect real estate assets from lawsuits. And then we're going to go over a six point checklist that we use to decide which strategy to use for which particular piece of property. And then in the end, I'm gonna show you how the three strategies we use fall in line with this six point checklist. And my goal with this video is for you to be crystal clear so you understand which strategy you need to use in your particular instance for your personal residence and for your investment property. And if you haven't already, now would be a good time to subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll be notified of the next video. So here's some of the strategies we use to protect real estate from lawsuits. Number one, land trust for privacy of ownership. Number two, LLCs for lawsuit protection and asset protection. And finally, equity stripping to strip the equity out of that property so there's nothing left to take. So how do we decide which one to use? What we do is we have a six point checklist. I'm gonna go over that with you now to determine which particular strategy to use or if we use multiple strategies. The first is asset protection. That is when somebody sues you personally, are your assets protected from seizure? Is your real estate protected? And are your other assets protected from being taken away in a lawsuit? Number two is lawsuit protection. When there is a lawsuit on the property itself, let's say you're sued for more than your insurance covers, which happens every day, when there's a lawsuit on the property, are you protected from that lawsuit taking your personal assets away from you. So lawsuit protection. Next is equity protection. Now, when there's a lawsuit in the property, is the equity in that property protected from being taken away and seized in that lawsuit? Number four, taxes. Are we minimizing excise taxes when transferring the property into a new entity? And are we minimizing income taxes and capital gains taxes? For example, are we killing your personal property tax exemptions when you own a property and you live in it, for example? Or are we ensuring that you get to keep a certain amount of the profit from the home you sell that you lived in tax-free? Number five, the due on sale clause. Are we minimizing the risk of a mortgage being called upon the transfer of the property? That is the due on sale clause. Number six, privacy. Are we keeping property ownership private to avoid being targeted by litigants or disgruntled tenants. So how do we use these particular strategies? Let's go ahead and go over that now. First of all, let's talk about how to protect your personal residence, the home that you live in. So here's your personal residence right here. What we do is we put your personal residence into a land trust for privacy of ownership so that when somebody looks up your name in the public records, they don't see your name associated with that particular piece of property. So a land trust gives you privacy of ownership. Now, what we don't typically do is put your personal residence into an LLC. Why? Well, number one, the bank that has the loan on the property, if you have a loan on one, could invoke the due on sale clause. Number two, you could lose the ability to take the capital gains deduction for a personal residence. Currently, that's $250,000 if you've lived in the property for two of the last five years or $500,000 for a married couple that you don't have to pay taxes on. Having the property that you live in in an LLC could kill that benefit. Also, you have your homestead protection in certain states to protect a certain amount of equity that could be lost. And then you have the homestead tax deduction where you pay a lower property taxes for your personal residence. So that's why we don't associate the ownership of your personal residence in an LLC. Instead, we use a land trust. With a land trust, it's tax neutral. It doesn't increase or decrease taxes. When you have the transfer of a property into a land trust, it doesn't typically include an excise tax or a county transfer tax. Now, the exception is Pennsylvania. They do have a, a county transfer tax in that particular state. The other 49 states, you get to put your property into a land trust without invoking the county excise tax. Now, we may involve a living trust for estate planning with that property property so that when you die, everything goes to your kids or whoever you want it to go to. And then what we do next is to protect the equity in the property 
yourself to protect the equity in your home, we will have an LLC. Typically, we'll set this up offshore or in Wyoming, and this LLC will record an equity line of credit mortgage against your property. So when people look in the public records, it looks like your home is mortgaged to the hilt. Now, if need be, we'll get a third party lender to purchase that mortgage to legitimize the mortgage, and then we'll put the proceeds into an international trust for asset protection. So that's how we strip the equity from property. That's called equity stripping. We have privacy of ownership through a land trust, and we do not put your personal residence into an LLC because it could kill a lot of the other benefits that you get for home ownership, such as not paying taxes on a substantial amount of profit and your homestead protection in certain states. Okay, next, what do we do for investment property? Here's an investment property. Each investment property we put into a separate land trust for privacy of ownership. Now, here are the benefits of a land trust. First of all, it gives you the privacy so your name doesn't show up in the public records. Two, if there's a mortgage on the property, so the Garn St. Germain Depository Institutions Act of 1982 says that if you have between one and four dwelling units, that's properties you live in, you can take that property, whether it's your personal residence or an investment property, and move it into this particular type of trust and the bank cannot call a loan due. So that gets around the due on sale clause. And with this particular type of trust, you remain the beneficiary of the trust. And then we associate an LLC with it. The LLC can become the beneficiary on a separate piece of paper. So if the county wants to see the land trust, it'll show you as the beneficiary. If the bank wants to see the land trust, it'll show you as the beneficiary. Then we have a separate piece of paper later that's separate from the trust called an assignment of beneficial interest, and then we assign your ownership or beneficial interest in the trust to an LLC. And why do we do that? The reason we do that is for asset protection and lawsuit protection. When there's a liability on the property, whether it's somebody visiting your property or it's a tenant or somebody walking by through the neighborhood who slips and falls on that investment property, this LLC can protect you from that particular liability jumping into your personal life and taking away your own assets. So it gives you the lawsuit protection. Second, give you the asset protection. You're driving home on Friday night from a restaurant and you rear in somebody in your car. You get sued for more than your insurance covers. You want to make sure that you have each property that you own for investment purposes in an LLC. So the LLC becomes the beneficiary of that land trust so that when a lawsuit comes knocking, you show the trust plus you show the assignment of beneficial interest. The assignment of beneficial interest is best if you have that notarized or you have it signed by DocuSign so you have a timestamp, so you have proof. When you assign the beneficial interest to the LLC, we'll typically set up the LLC in the state where the property is located. We may have a Wyoming LLC own all of the LLCs that own the properties in each particular state. But typically, the beneficiary of the LLC for investment property, we make that an LLC in the state where the property is located. And we have a Wyoming LLC own all of those LLCs for extra privacy. Another benefit of using a land trust is that when you put the property into a land trust, it typically doesn't invoke a reassessment of the property. A lot of times, if you put the property into an LLC, it can in many states, and you don't want to trigger an excise tax, a transfer tax, or get a bigger tax bill by putting it into an LLC directly. So we do it through the back door, through a land trust, making the beneficiary of the land trust an LLC. So we have an LLC as the beneficiary of each land trust for your investment property. But what if there's a lawsuit on the property itself? That was a question we asked in the beginning. Again, we want to protect the equity in that property. And you guessed it, we do equity stripping. We use an equity stripping strategy where we take an LLC. This is often offshore inside of an offshore asset protection trust, or it could be a Wyoming LLC with the virtual office program, a nominee privacy, so your name doesn't appear in the public records. And then we record an equity stripping line of credit. And that's a line of credit. So there's no money changing hands initially, except when that mortgage is challenged in a court, they start questioning, okay, who is the owner of the LLC that has the mortgage against the property? Let me see the proceeds. That's when you call us. We get a third party lender to purchase that mortgage and then put the proceeds from that mortgage into your international asset protection trust so that you have that equity stripped from the property. Since it's a US asset, putting the asset itself, putting the real estate itself into an offshore trust won't do you much good because the judge can say, great, you have that fancy trust, but I don't care that real estate is here. I'm going to take it away. But when you have the equity stripped 
from the property and you have the money from that mortgage put into your offshore trust, then really there's nothing they can do because the value or the equity has been stripped from that property. So in this case, you're not able to run away and spend that money that would be too risky to the lender, but it does show a judge that a true third party lender has purchased that mortgage and that you receive the bona fide proceeds and you receive that in your offshore trust. So that's how we protect rental property from lawsuits, asset protection for real estate investments. Now, if this happens to be a commercial property here, and a commercial property, we mean a property that people don't live in, an office building that you own as an investment, or a property that is five or more dwelling units. It could be residential, but as if it's five or more, now it's into the commercial realm. We don't typically put that into a land trust, especially if there's a mortgage on it, because the bank could invoke the due on sale clause. So what we do is we record an equity stripping mortgage against the property to strip out the equity from the property. Now, there are some commercial loans that you can do that that, but we've seen in practice and in statute, in our experience, we've never seen a bank call the loan due because you slapped a second mortgage on a commercial property. And legally, we haven't seen where they're legally able to actually invoke the due on sale clause when you slap a second mortgage on commercial property. We've never seen it. And as long as you're making the mortgage payment on the underlying mortgage, hey, it puts them in a more secure position because they have a second mortgage on top of theirs. Again, we get a third party lender if needed, if they start questioning the equity line of credit. We monetize the equity line of credit and we get a third party lender to purchase it. So here's a nice summary. You may have seen this if you've watched some of the other videos. Each investment property is in a separate land trust. Your personal residence is a land trust. And for your investment properties, these represent the investment properties. And this in here that I'm putting a check mark by right here represents the home you live in. Each of these land trusts would make an LLC in the state where the property is located a beneficiary of each land trust. We might set up a Wyoming LLC over here to own all of these LLCs. So you have privacy of ownership in some states, the membership, and in most states, the managers of the LLC are public record. So we make the Wyoming LLC the member and the manager of these LLCs. It also makes it simpler for tax purposes because you're just filing a tax return for one LLC and all of the income, it flows through this LLC. And that way it simplifies things for tax purposes as well. And again, we take another LLC, a lot of times that's offshore, sometimes that'll be a, a separate Wyoming LLC. It won't be the same Wyoming LLC that owns your other properties. And that records the equity stripping lines of credit against each property and against your home. So let's take a look, as I promised, at this checklist and how each one satisfies the checklist. For asset protection, a land trust doesn't provide asset protection. It's for privacy of ownership. An LLC does so that when you're sued personally, there are provisions, you get the charging order protection that can prevent the lawsuit against you personally from seizing your your LLC and anything inside of it. So you have asset protection with the LLC. In most states, you need two or more members of that LLC in, in order to have asset protection. Many times we'll make another LLC, the member of that LLC and the first LLC, the member a part member of the other LLC. Equity stripping can also provide some asset protection because it strips the value out of the property. Uh, lawsuit protection. A land trust doesn't provide lawsuit protection. An LLC can when there's a lawsuit on the property itself. It can protect you from personally being vulnerable to that particular liability within the property. Equity stripping, well, it does protect the equity in the particular property. Equity stripping doesn't protect you from that lawsuit jumping over and taking your personal assets. And that's why we employ the LLC and the equity stripping as well, because you have the equity in that particular property protected from that particular lawsuit. So you still need both. Equity protection, certainly the equity stripping protects the equity in the property. So it takes away the value out of that property. So it makes it not exciting to sue you anymore because really there's nothing left to take. Taxes. The land trust is tax neutral. It doesn't increase or decrease your taxes. The LLC by the standard way we set them up. So it is treated as a sole proprietorship or disregarded entity for tax purposes. There is really no tax at the LLC level. The tax responsibility flows through to the members. So the LLC is tax neutral. Equity stripping, well, that doesn't affect your taxes really at all because you're not really making a profit. You're just stripping equity that already exists in the property. As far as the county transfer fees, when you put the property into a land trust, there typically are not county transfer fees for doing that except for in 
Pennsylvania, you have to pay a filing fee, those five, 10, $30, whatever, but you don't typically have to pay a transfer fee in any state except for Pennsylvania. LLCs a lot of times will have county transfer fees or reassessments depending on the state. And so that's the reason why if we want to put the property into an LLC, we'll first put it into a land trust and then through the back door, we'll make the LLC the beneficiary of that land trust. And now equity stripping, as far as the county taxes, states such as New York and Florida do have taxes based on the value of the mortgage. So we can use equity stripping strategies in those states, but you just have to keep in mind, there may be some fees that may be not insubstantial <laughs> from the county when you do record a mortgage and it's based on the value of the mortgage. So just keep that in mind. The due on sale clause, as long as it's between one and four dwelling units, you don't have to worry about the transfer into a land trust invoking the due on sale clause for the mortgage. In some cases, if it is a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, loan, they will not invoke the due on sale clause if you put it into an LLC. Other type of loans, they can invoke the due on sale clause. So that's sometimes yes, sometimes no. Equity stripping, we haven't seen that be an issue in practice, even with commercial property. Even if there is a clause saying you can't slap a second mortgage on, we've never seen a bank invoke a due on sale clause. The land trust does give privacy of ownership. Why? Because you as the beneficiary of that land trust and subsequently the LLC, you do not show up in the public records because you do not need to record record the land trust itself. You do record the deed showing the property is in a land trust, but you don't have to record the actual land trust itself showing you as the beneficiary or even that you've assigned the beneficial interest to an LLC. Privacy, sometimes if you've employed our nominee services, so that your name doesn't show up in the public records. Even Wyoming, they will show the managers of LLCs. A lot of people don't know that. I see some videos online that say that you don't, but if you actually look in the public records and look at the associated parties, you do in the subsequent years have to record who the manager of the LLC is. And I'm telling you, mark my word, that does show up in the public records. So you don't get continuous privacy with a Wyoming LLC. Eventually you're gonna to have to file the list of managers and that'll show up in the public records. That's why a lot of people get our nominee privacy service and virtual office services in Wyoming. Equity stripping, well, somebody does need to sign the mortgage and you can sign that personally before you put it into the land trust or you can put it into the land trust first and then the trustee of the land trust signs the mortgage Mortgage, and that way your name doesn't appear on the mortgage as a signatory. So by now as promised, you should know why to use land trust and when to use them, when to use LLCs, when to use equity stripping and how each of these strategies work. And if you want more free information, visit assetprotectionplanners.com. Give us a call if you need to set up some of these strategies. If you haven't already, subscribe before you go. We'll see you in the next video. This is the business guy.